Vaughn Gnome and welcome back to your favorite segment on my channel, Out of the Vault. If you are new here, please let me just say welcome, it is a pleasure to have you. And for all of you returning, I know it feels like it's been forever, but of course you knew that I was going to be back to continue discussing the wonderful world of Disney and Pixar and Studio Ghibli magic. Even though we all know that when it comes to hearing Disney these days, we know that they're all wrapped in controversy, but we're not going to be getting into any of that today. What we are going to be doing is celebrating the fact that it is a new year, it is 2022, and we have not one but two brand new additions to the Pixar Animated Library to discuss this year. And today, we are actually going to be discussing a landmark in the Disney Pixar Library. We are going to be talking about the 20 fifth film. And that, of course, is Turning Red, starring the voice of Sandra Oh, as well as one of my favorite character actors in all of entertainment, the great James Hong. So, before I get into my thoughts on the movie, I just want to say that, my goodness, you want to talk about a lot to unpack regarding an animated film? Well, I definitely say that Turning Red is the one. There was a lot to be said about this movie, like, why did it not come to theaters and directly to streaming? Because it was actually actually pulled before it officially went directly to Disney+. Plus. There are some people that say that this movie is extremely inappropriate because of some of the nature of this film's story points. And some people basically are saying that this movie was extremely horribly marketed because people were expecting something and my goodness did they get something else. Well, hearing all of that, you know me. I like to actually go into all these Disney films with an open mind, and I am here to basically say that when it comes to Turning Red, I really had a great time with this film. Is it the best Pixar film that I've ever seen? Absolutely not, but it is definitely far from the worst, because I can name a whole bunch of Disney Pixar films that I really feel are a lot worse than Turning Red. So Turning Red is the story of a Canadian Asian girl named May, who is definitely one of a kind. She has a small group of friends. She beats to her own drum. She loves so many things that make her special and unique, and she has no cares about what other people think about her regardless. However, there is one person that she truly cares about when it comes to how she lives her life, and that, of course, is her mother because of the fact that the two of them share a very strong bond. And isn't that something that many mothers and daughters have in this world? And we all know what happens when people reach their teen years. They Things get turned upside down in so many different ways, regardless of if you are male, female, or something in between, you definitely clash with your parents. That is definitely something that I did when I was becoming a teenager. But in the world of Turning Red, something weird happens when you officially reach these teen years, and it turns out that May's family has a heritage, be it a blessing or a curse, where all the women in their family, when they reach extremely high emotions, they turn into red pandas. Now, that was one of the main selling points for me because I love red pandas. I can watch them for hours at a zoo. I think that they are the most adorable animals on the face of this planet. So a girl turning into a red panda when she goes completely berserk, why wouldn't I want to see that? And I got to admit, I actually had a good time with this film. I loved the character of May. I love how she worked with her mother in regards to the acting as well as the story. I also, with my wife, who watched it with me, definitely loved the fact that this movie was a snapshot in the early 2000s because there were so many things that we were pointing out that just made us laugh so hard, not just because of the fact that this is the story of a girl that wants to go to a boy band concert with her buddies, but, you know, we pointed out the disc van, the Tamagotchi, the baby G watches, there were just so many things that we remember in our teens and 20s that we laughed about when we were watching them in the movie. Now, there definitely is an elephant in the room in regards to this film, and that is the fact that Disney did a horrible job of marketing this movie because one of the few things that I will definitely say that Pixar has done in the last couple of years, they have made much different films than what they used to with the Toy Stories and the Finding Nemo's and the Monsters, Inks. But I definitely th think that from a plot standpoint and the content, I think it is much better than some of the Disney canon classics that have 
have come out in the, around the same time frame. And I think that that's just because of the fact that Pixar is making a big statement that they're not necessarily trying to cater their films to kids these days. They're really trying to cater these films to the kids that grew up with the early Pixar films. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, but now it makes so much more sense as to why the last couple of Pixar movies weren't actually in theaters, because when you take a look at some of the things that happen in Turning Red, and I will definitely say that I have spoken to people who actually have young kids that they showed this movie to, they were not happy with the fact that some of these things showed up in there. And as parents, I can understand that, but as Two people, myself and my wife, who don't have a kid yet, but very, very soon, we're glad that we saw this movie ahead of time because we know for a solid fact that we would have probably been horrified too if we showed this to a little kid. But in the end, I still had a great time with this movie. It's not perfect. I mean, I definitely think that the story's climax had a bit of an extreme ending. Like, it felt a little weird and over the top. I mean, there was a moment during that point of the film where there was a funny moment that pretty much parodied the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers to the point where I yelled at the TV screen, it's Morphin time, at the exact moment when it was supposed to happen, and my wife and I just laughed because it was just appropriately yelled, and it was just perfect. And I also will say that another part of this film that lacked was the supporting cast outside of May and her mom. Now, granted, her father has a really heartfelt th moment that really feels like a Studio Ghibli film, which I absolutely loved. I really did. But truth of the matter is, especially when it comes to May's friends, you really got people that were very one-dimensional and were just there to support May's story and not necessarily themselves. There are so many people that are screaming for a short featuring her friend Abby because people loved Abby and she really was the comedic relief of this film. But I will still say that this movie is definitely fun. It's very funny. It has some really great moments, but, but I think what Disney did was ruffle some feathers in the world of parenting, especially because when it comes to parents these days and what they're finding out that their kids are being exposed to, a lot of people are really at war with the higher-ups because they're feeling that their kids are being corrupted. But I have no opinion on that right now, and I'm not going to get into it, but I am going to say that Pixar is still doing a great job in regards to making films. I think that their last few films, especially Soul, was just extremely deep on so many levels, and yes, I just had such a good time watching this movie. It's definitely a movie that I want to see again. It's definitely a movie that I want to own on Blu-ray and DVD, because I like to have all the Pixar films in my collection, but I definitely can see where people are frustrated frustrated, but I also just think that there is the people that feel that movies, when especially they're animated, they really need to work on their marketing for the purposes of making sure that parents will know if young kids will enjoy it. And there's also a group of people that feel that animation does not necessarily have to be for kids. And this movie definitely expresses that along with a lot of anime overtones. Like, if you never watched anime in your life, you're just not gonna get some of the jokes in this film. But I had a good time with this movie. I definitely recommend it to people who want to see the newest offering from Pixar, and I'm gonna give it a three stars out of four. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please leave your comments in the box below, and let's discuss Turning Red, and I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, feel free to leave a comment, also, feel free to subscribe if you want to be up to date with our latest videos. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words.